Unit 9, Transportation. Human transportation was the original transportation system. For almost all of human history, transport meant that people carried whatever needed to be transported. We're going to talk today a little bit about agricultural transportation and the components of agricultural transportation. Agricultural transportation consists of many components. Now, of course, not all the components are used for every type of crop or agricultural product. But we'll take a look at some of the segments and the components here of the entire agricultural transport system. First, we have farm trucks. These are trucks that are actually owned by the farmers or the producers. And their primary use is the transport of supplies and equipment to and from areas of production. And occasionally the transport of product in smaller quantities to some other location. Um, next, we have over the road trucks, which are primarily semis for transport of large quantities of materials uh, from areas of production to other locations. Those other locations could be potentially uh, the final sale location, could be a processing facility from which goods will be transported once again. Um, it could be uh, an intermediate transportation facility such as a port or a grain elevator. Um, these trucks can include refrigeration, so uh, goods requiring refrigeration can be easily transported by trucks. Uh, next up the line, we have trains. These are primarily used only for the transport of bulk goods from intermediate locations, meaning they've already been moved once from the production area to an intermediate location, such as a grain elevator, a depot, or a port, and then they're moved to another intermediate location uh, where they're transported yet again. Again, trains also can include refrigeration, so goods requiring refrigeration are easily transported by train. Uh, next, barges. Barges transport bulk goods from inland ports to other inland ports. Primarily, barges operate on rivers. Um, so, for instance, a, uh, a port on uh, near Kansas City, Missouri, um, on the Missouri River, the, uh, the goods can be transported down to the Mississippi River and down to a port in New Orleans, or they could be moved upriver to someplace in uh, Illinois or Iowa or Minnesota. Um, typically, you don't see barges on the open sea. That's uh, the province of ships, and ships transport from large ports and generally transport internationally. So ships transport from ocean ports or from inland ports on, uh, such as the Great Lakes and then move bulk goods that way. And finally, aircraft are primarily used for time-sensitive transport and generally internationally. They're the least efficient. Here we see a photo of a bulk carrier. Uh, this type of ship will typically carry bulk goods like grains, soybeans, that sort of thing. Um, in large open holds uh, from relatively deep water ports on the uh, Great Lakes or around the oceans uh, shoreline to other countries or other areas um, on the Great Lakes or other ports up and down the coastline. Uh, these ships can also carry things that are somewhat process processed in bags or completely processed bags, boxes, and that sort of thing. Uh, next, we see a grain elevator. There's a train also in the photograph. Grain elevators are intermediate facilities. Bulk grains and soybeans are brought by truck from farms where they're produced and loaded into the grain elevator 
and stored there. Then trains come by or ships if the grain elevator happens to be located at a port. And then the bulk goods loaded onto the train or the ship and transported to another intermediate area, another grain elevator at another uh, part of the railroad or a different port where the goods are moved once again uh, to a processing facility or a place where they're going to be consumed. Um, so you can see that such bulk goods can be transported several times, trucked from the farm to the elevator, hauled by train from the elevator to a barge, then down the river on a barge to ships, and then somewhere else. Um, it's an intermediate stop uh, on the food transport system. Uh, this photograph shows an over-the-road truck, a semi. This one happens to be a multiple trailer semi uh, hauling uh, sugar cane, but we've seen all probably have seen trucks like this hauling corn or soybeans or other crops from a production facility or production area, the farm, to a processing facility where, in this case, sugar cane is turned into sugar, or to an intermediate transport facility like a uh, grain elevator or a port. Um, finally, we have, uh, you know, the low end of the scale here is the farm truck, um, which will pick up supplies, bring such as seed, fertilizer, things like that, bring those supplies to the farm where they'll be used. In some cases, some uh, small quantities of goods produced on the farm can be transported by these trucks, but most of that on large farms is relocated to uh, semi-trucks for bulk transport. Now, I mentioned something about the efficiency of the types of transport, um, aircraft being probably the least efficient. Um, here we'll take a look at what is efficient. Um, for transportation on land, trains are by far the most efficient method in terms of fuel expended per ton of goods per mile transported. On waterways, barges are the most efficient method and they're more efficient per mile uh, than trains even typically. Uh, and on uh, the Great Lakes or on the oceans, um, ships are quite efficient. Um, however, they're not particularly fast and they're less suited for perishable bulk goods. Um, trains being faster than ships or barges and can be equipped with refrigeration make them suitable for transporting almost any agricultural good between bulk handling facilities, depots, grain elevators, that sort of thing. Um, you seldom see, however, a train parked outside a grocery store. So from wherever the train stops, from that point to the final distribution, grocery stores or whatever, uh, another method of transport, usually trucks, is required. Um, Trucks are also relatively fast and can be refrigerated and therefore can handle just about any agricultural good and um, are most suited for transport of uh, goods from bulk handling facilities to markets or to processing facilities. Aircraft, of course, they're the fastest method of transport, um, can also handle goods requiring coal transport, but they're less efficient than other modes and can't deliver goods to any final location unless that final destination happens to be an airport. Um, so virtually everything delivered by airplane then also needs to be trucked to its final location. They are best suited for high value perishable products often shipped internationally. So what are issues with transportation? What are the problems with transportation? Well, we've seen um, that most goods are transported multiple times from the farm to an intermediate handling facility to a processing facility uh, to a distribution warehouse and then out to uh, the final point of sale. But then from that point, they're transported back to a consumer's home. 
Almost all modes of transportation rely on fossil fuels, which are finite in supply. So we're using up the fossil fuels that we have. Also, fossil fuels are producers of air pollution and greenhouse gases. Fossil fuel burning is the primary component to global warming. And uh, also is becoming more and more expensive. Um, over the road transport, primarily by truck, adds to traffic, adds to noise, adds to wear and tear on the infrastructure, the roads and the bridges. Uh, the larger the truck, the more wear and tear on our roads and bridges. Aircraft, in addition to burning fossil fuels, um, creating noise, uh, also create contrails, those white streams of steam we see behind uh, aircraft jets flying through the sky. Um, contrails have been shown to be a primary contribution to something called global dimming. Uh, interesting topic, and you might want to take a look, uh, Google global dimming, and uh, learn a little bit more about that topic. Um, ships, again, in addition to using fossil fuels, um, transport alien species around the globe, causing additional environmental damage. Um, for instance, sea lampreys in the Great Lakes, zebra mussels in the Great Lakes, um, those uh, alien species uh, came to the Great Lakes and are now doing a great amount of damage um, in the Great Lakes. They came in aboard uh, ships in the uh, ballast water of uh, large ships. So, in addition to all the environmental issues involved with transportation of agricultural goods, and really all goods, um, there are other issues that might not be as obvious. Um, one is that people are separated from food production and have little understanding of where or how food is grown, what the process is. Um, the time delay from production to table can make foods less nutritious and less flavorful. In addition to that, because of this time delay in transport, um, breeders and scientists doing genetic modification are looking for ways to make uh, foods last longer in transport. Um, and those methods are not always compatible with um, the best flavor, the best nutrition, or that sort of thing. Um, and finally here, our normal methods of production and transport, growing it in a, in a uh, rural area on a farm and then transporting things to the cities, by doing this, we've created food deserts and we limit food security of urban areas. Urban areas are quite nearly 100% dependent on a transportation system for food and other goods. When disasters strike, such as uh, hurricanes, that damage the transportation system, um, trains can't run, uh, so food may not be able to be moved into an area, roadways may be damaged, um, Earthquakes in, in California collapsing freeways make it uh, more difficult to transport food um, and all goods. And uh, cities realize, are beginning to realize that they are isolated food deserts, 100% dependent on other areas for the food and other goods. So what are the alternatives to doing this? Um, how can we minimize the impact and the is issues associated with transporting agricultural goods? Um, first uh, would be by eliminating transportation altogether. What this means is moving 
producing, producing areas, the, the production, the farms, to the same areas as consumption or processing, urban agriculture, creating urban farms so that the goods can be grown and quite possibly purchased right there in the same place, zero transportation involved except to be moved from the place being purchased back to the home of the consumer. Um, second, by using alternative methods of transportation. But currently with our alternative methods of transportation, this usually requires moving production uh, because most alternative methods of transportation uh, can't move as much uh, as quickly for as long a distance as the fossil fuel methods. And then third, by optimizing the normal methods of transport to move products as few times as possible and to use the most efficient means to move those products. So this first thing that we talked about, changing production areas. By moving production areas closer to or even into urban areas, we address most of the issues created by transporting food. We reduce the need for transportation and the associated pollution and uh, depletion of finite resources. We place production close to consumers, which means a closer relationship between the producers and the consumers, along with a greater appreciation by consumers of how food is produced. Food can be fresher and more flavorful and more nutritious when it's purchased directly from the grower at the time of harvest. Um, in addition to helping with the transport issues, when we move um, the, where we produce to where we consume, we create opportunities for entrepreneurs and more local jobs. Using alternative methods of transport, that's good, but currently most alternative methods of transport are limited in capability, especially in terms of distances that can be covered or the speed with which those distances can be covered. Um, but despite that, alternative transport methods do make sense in many areas. Local deliveries, especially in cities, in very urban areas, can be handled very efficiently, sometimes more efficiently, um, by human-powered vehicles like bicycles or electric-powered vehicles. And smaller vehicles, such as electric delivery vans and bicycles, uh, help reduce congestion, noise, and pollution in those highly urban areas. How about trains? They're not often thought of as an alternative uh, transport system or an alternative fuel transport system, but many rail lines are actually powered by electricity rather than have locomotives that uh, burn uh, diesel fuel to generate electricity to drive them. Uh, uh, many rail lines are driven by electricity and have electric locomotives uh, picking up the electricity either from overhead or third rail type of situation. Um, and you might say, well, yeah, but fossil fuels are burned in order to generate that electricity, and that's true. But fossil fuels such as natural gas, um, when burned in an internal combustion engine, fossil fuels are about 20% efficient. That means 80% of the energy produced by burning a fossil fuel is wasted as heat out of the engine. Only 20% gets turned into actual work. When those same fossil fuels are burned to produce electricity, it's about 60% efficient. Still not perfect, but three times better than using an internal combustion engine. So burning fossil fuels to generate electricity for vehicles makes economic sense. It makes sense um, in terms of the amount of pollution per mile that will be created and uh, makes sense for things like pollution and noise and all of that stuff. 
about electric vehicles. Well, electric vehicles are not a new idea. Many, if not most, of the first automobiles were electric. Uh, electricity seemed to make a lot more sense uh, than using a complicated, uh, noisy um, internal combustion engine uh, that spewed out pollution uh, to the early automakers. Um, this photograph shows uh, a Detroit electric car being charged in August of 1919. Um, but electric cars were produced um, as early as the uh, late 1800s. Um, fossil fuels came into uh, use in uh, automobiles uh, through the efforts of um, Standard Oil and other oil companies um, trying to uh, uh, find a market for the byproduct of their production of kerosene for uh, uh, lamp oil for lighting and uh, gasoline was one of those byproducts. And uh, so they uh, supported uh, production of internal combustion engines. Um, the original Model T was uh, the engine for the original Model T was designed to run on ethanol or alcohol. Um, so alternative fuels and electric vehicles, not a new thing. Bicycles. Uh, a lot of people don't think about bicycles as a uh, commercial transport uh, vehicle, but um, they're actually being used that way in many, many cities. Um, here we see a bicycle with a small flatbed trailer uh, for designed specifically for carrying cargo. A trailer such as this is capable of carrying loads of 100 pounds or more, um, and much larger trailers are available capable of carrying much heavier loads. Um, transport like this is suitable for urban environments where distances and time uh, are manageable. Uh, on a trailer like this, um, containers could be stacked, boxes or uh, like giant Tupperware containers that if you need something sealed, um, good for delivery of goods from markets to homes, um, that sort of thing. Um, here we see a bicycle itself designed as a cargo carrier. Um, the cargo box can be open as the one in this picture is, um, can have a lid that can be closed, can be locked if necessarily. The uh, cargo box can be insulated um, so that hot or cold goods um, can be carried. Um, and the box can be removed so that the front end is simply a platform and other boxes and other materials uh, can be stacked. And again, you know, we're talking about something here suitable for uh, short distance transport in primarily heavy urban environments. Uh, finally, here we have a photograph of a farmer's market in Wisconsin. Um, farmer's markets typically bring producers and consumers together without middlemen. But transportation is still required to get the producers to the location of the market and also, to, of course, to get the consumers there. However, if the uh, producers are urban farmers, the distance they have to cover may be quite small and they may be able to use alternative methods of transport to get their goods to the consumers. So that concludes this unit.